the success of this program is because of that uh, commitment by others uh, to make it uh, really happen. Today, I don't want to really talk about uh, inspiring you. Today, I want to really help you internalize the vision of this program. It's there, maybe for the Form 3s, and now all the Form 2s. You've been with us uh, in a journey the third year and the second year. And you may have forgotten the vision and the bigger dream that we have for this um, initiative. Just to understand the background of this program, we started this program in a very humble way in 1998. And it started uh, with my village of Nyagatogo, where we saw one need a student, and we just sponsored one need a student. At that time, we were sponsoring them to go to university. He couldn't have made it to university. We enabled him. 13 years later, the young scholar has graduated to be a young man who is now the managing director of Equity Bank Uganda. Before going to Uganda, he was the managing director of Equity Bank Rwanda. And before going to Rwanda, he was the executive director in charge of operations in South Sudan. And before that, he was a branch manager of Equity Bank, Eldoret, Nakuru, Nyeri, and Kereaine. And that opened a new chapter, but I've just given you one, the first student, because then we can study the transformation and the significant impact that that young student has had in himself starting with the self, starting with his family, his community, and society at large, not to speak about the impact he has had in Equity Bank as an institution. And we repeated that experience repeatedly from that uh, time, and we saw the impact it could have. As we did that, the numbers kept on growing, and we saw we were changing individuals, we were changing families, we were changing communities. Uh, so essentially, we thought, hmm, this is sounding good. And we saw every time we increased the number, we were scaling our success. And the number kept on going until about by seven years ago, we then said we were taking now the best boy and the best girl in every village or in every district. And every branch would bring uh, their best girl and the best boy. And we saw a revolution. So far, we had hit 3,700 of such students. And we asked uh, if they were like Samuel, the first student, the scale of impact. But as we studied it more and more, we realized most of our students were coming from middle income families. It is those whose parents could afford them secondary education who were joining the program. And we realized maybe there was a challenge. And I looked back in my life and so if I had not been supported, I couldn't have benefited from uh, the equity leadership program because my circumstances and situation could not have allowed me to go through secondary education. And we asked, is the national support as good as it was when myself and Dr. Heron, during our years, uh, was, and we realized, no, the resources of the government were not adequate. And we, say we, we said we could complement the government to ensure gifted kids accessed education. 
because when we looked at our lives, we were a product of access to education. Good quality education is the most transformational offering and gift that one can achieve because it gives them capacity, it gives them competence. If I didn't have the gift of a bursary, as we used to call scholarships those days, most likely I would still be pracking tea in my village of Medanga, Nyagatogo. And because I'm a strong man, maybe the tea, tea pracking might not have been the most suitable job. Maybe I would have been helping in digging pit latrines in my village. The difference between who I could have ever become and who I am today was made by access to education. And we felt we needed to reshape the program, not to discontinue the best brains we had in the country, because when we studied the leadership of this country, we traced the leadership of this country to the best brains of their generation who got the best opportunities the country could offer. Today, you'll see a pattern that they were availed an opportunity at a tender age, but the opportunity was access to education. We said if education was the transformational opportunity, then why don't we extend to those who have no that opportunity? And that is when we said, let's go back to where free primary education ends and see whether we could provide a transition platform so that those who are gifted, those who have demonstrated competence, but are challenged, we ensure they transit to secondary and to university. And that was the genesis of Wings to Fry program. It is important we remember the purpose of this program. Least we forget, because the purpose for the program, if we don't internalize it, then we we'll lose the course, and in the process, lose both the battle and the war. This program was intended to avail you an opportunity that is availed to those who are financially endowed so that you can effectively be as competitive as any other child in the country. And since you are nationally gifted, prepare you to become a leader during your generation, time of your generation. That is in essence. So as we sit in this class, as we sit in our classrooms, we should never forget that behind us is a vision, behind us and our presence in this room is a big dream of ensuring you be succeed to become a leader. It's, it's not about uh, education. This program is not about education. Is about nurturing the next generation of gifted, talented leaders. And it should never be lost to you that you are a dream of a leader. That your vision is to become a leader. Leadership has been defined by access to opportunity. So we felt if we gave you the opportunity, you could then rise to the leader that society would be looking upon and a leader who could understand the dynamics of society. I was able to be part of this program and part of the founders and initiators of this program 
because I understood the society because I had seen it all. I had experienced both worlds of our society. Unfortunately, when leaders are a product of opportunity and where opportunity is not equally distributed, most leaders don't understand the other side of our society. So without in you, we'll get a very different crop of leaders because the opportunity would first of all transform you. It's an opportunity that transforms you. It's an opportunity that transforms your circumstances. And an opportunity that helps you to transform the circumstances of your family and your community. If you were born to opportunities, the opportunity doesn't help you to transform because opportunity has already transformed you. You are born in a transformed environment. And you have very little role to play to shape the environment in which you live. But if you were born devoid of opportunities, when an opportunity comes, it helps you to transform yourself. It is not about material transformation of your family. But the most important thing, at the moment that we expect to be happy happening in your family, is increase in hope for a better future through you. That the family can see an investment through you that would transform their circumstances and their hopes. Most of us who are Christians or, or, or of whatever religion, um, we live by faith. We believe. We have hope and we have faith. This opportunity was supposed to give those around you confidence, hope, belief, and faith to a better future through you. You are an agent of transforming the environment around you and the circumstances around you. But you can't transform that environment unless you transform yourself first. This opportunity is supposed to make you an agent of transformation. It transforms you and then you transform those around you, you transform the environment around you, and you transform everything that you can influence. And that is why this opportunity is not about education. It's not about education. And we then said, if we created a critical mass of what we have an ambition of offering 30,000 wings to fry scholarships, we not only have transformed 30,000 future leaders, but we might have transformed 30,000 families, 30,000 villages, 30,000 communities, and when you link all of them, we might have transformed the uh, society. <clears throat> if then that is the case and the dream of this any of you who don't actualize the self-transformation, who then fail to transform their family, who tra fail to transform their village, who tra fail to s transform their community, and by extension, fail to transform our society. In you, I see the change that we want to see in our society. But that change must in, ma manifest itself in you. It must start with you. If you don't change, you will not be able to change your family. You will not be able to change your clan, your village, and your community, and at large, your society. 
It's imperative. You understand that vision. Because this program has no expectations on you other than transformation of yourself through opportunities. No other obligation to you. Because we know once you transform yourself. I transformed myself by the bursary opportunity I was given. I transformed my family. I moved my mother from a grass dust house to a brick house or to a stone house, as we would call it. Put the first solar panel in the village to demonstrate the power of education and to inspire everybody in the, in the village to educate their children. And I've seen the impact we have had in uh, my village of uh, Melanga village. And that is what I envisage will happen. When I was given an opportunity beyond myself, I know the role I have played in transforming equity building society, a technically insolvent building society, to be the biggest bank in East and Central Africa. And through Vision 2030, I can see the influence and the impact I'm having in the nation. This program is about social disruption, where the future leadership of this country will not be dependent on the circumstances, the, the situation that the leader was brought up with. It is the dream and the aspiration of the individual that counts. When I look at the results over the last uh, three years, they make me very proud and I'm very inspired. Why? Because out of the class, the first class, 94% of all our students qualified for university admission. <laughs> well, 94 is a really significant number. Its significance is only revealed when you compare with the national average, which was only 27. So our performance was three times better than the national average. <laughs> that the probability of a scholar in this room to get admitted to university is three times better than the Kenyan student in any school in the country. <laughs> but the statistics became even better when only 0.3 of the Kenyan children got an A grade, 34% of all our students got an A grade. <laughs> so we are talking not about 10 times but a hundred times the probability of a student in this room to get an A grade is a hundred times higher than a student in any school in Kenya. <laughs> so we are living change. We are living change. But I will be concerned if any of you is left behind, because we are not complete. While I appreciate 94% university um, qualification, I cry over the, four, the 6%. And I cry because that is a dream lost along the way. Because each of you in this room has the capacity, the capability, and the competence to get to university admission. Because for sure, 5% of the children in your district will be admitted to university. 12% of all children in every district 
are eligible for admission. So when you were in the 5% when you did your uh, certificate of primary education, I can't understand why if you maintain the same performance, you would not qualify for university after Form 4. And I want us to be our brothers and our sisters keeper. And we work as a wings to fly team to encourage each other. When you see one of us derailed, remember it's a dream that is being derailed. And whatever you can do, start giving, uh, uh, giving back now to encourage those who seem to be losing sight of the dream. None of us should lose sight of the vision that we have set ourselves to of changing ourselves, our families, our communities, and our society. But that dream requires us to rise to those positions of decision making. And that is why I said it's not about education. It's the use of this opportunity to rise to the positions of decision making, like the way I make decision in equity and say, 2% of our revenue be given to the foundation so that it can sponsor this program. We will try everything possible to ensure 10% 10 of, 10 of all our scholars who meet the grades who go to the best universities in the world. And I'm glad. <laughs> we need to avail you the best opportunities there is in the world because opportunities is what makes doors to open for you. It's what will make opportunities to open for you. And those opportunities are not about you. I want you to see the big picture. That this dream is not about you. It's about the majority of Kenyans who every day fail to realize their dreams and aspirations because they don't have opportunities. We want you to be the social disruptors, the change agents to create the society that is harmonious, that is inclusive and sustainable and worth living in because everybody is happy. You don't want to create a society where 90% are unhappy and 10% are happy because it's not sustainable. And that's why we needed you to be an agent of change. We needed you to transform yourself. You will not be an, agent, an effective agent of change unless you transform yourself to get those opportunities, to get the power to sign on the dotted line about the changes you want to see in society. It, otherwise, it will remain a pipe dream. This program is about making you the angel that Kenyans have been waiting for, that Africa have been waiting for. It's good to pray that God sets angels, but with the help of God, we can create our own angels. And you are the angels that we are creating for our nation and our continent. And consequently, every time you fail in our dream, you are not failing yourself. If you drop out of school, you are not failing yourself. You are failing yourself. You are failing your colleagues. You are failing your family. You are failing your community. You are failing your district. You are failing your county, you are failing your country, you are failing your continent, you are failing the world. What a burden you have. I wanted you to be aware of the responsibility on your shoulders. So that you wear the responsibility and see the prospects and opportunities of change that can come through you. I want you to remain focused. Because it will be unfortunate for this program to be an edit in itself. 
this program is a means to an end, but not an end itself. Is a means to change in society. The change that you would like to see, and I have no doubt you know what needs to change in society, be that change. Be the agent of that change. We hold hearts together, and in unity, we bring the change during our lifetime. And we become the, the, uh, the generation that creates the perfect country in the world. I have no doubt a number of 30,000 youngsters within the same age group, within a period of uh, 10 years, so it's the same age group, given, driven by a common purpose, can achieve what has never been achieved in society. I know because of your humble uh, beginning like mine, you'll have no room for primitive accumulation and unfettered greed that you have to keep on feeding. You know that a human being just needs enough like any other human being. And you'll have the compassion to share and the compassion to help the needy within our society. And our society will be a very happy one. I, I, the other day I was listening to... I think it was about uh, last week on Tuesday. We had a set of party to the 64 who were going to the US. And this uh, lady who was in Bahati Secular School in Kuru, stood out and said, I want to share. I've had two happiest moments in my life. The first moment when I got the wings to fry scholarship. And the second happiest moment when I got my scholarship to Arizona University in the US. Yeah. Like, like her, you have had the first opportunity. The second betting opportunity is your admission to a university. Because there is, this is not a, way, a war or a change or a purpose that requires physical strength. It requires knowledge. It requires capacity. It requires intellectual value to be able to do what we have to do to our society. And hence, the higher you go in education, the better for this uh, transformation. Because it's not a physical strength that is required. It's capacity and knowledge. It's the ability to network at that level that you are headed to now. So I thought, least you forget, I remind you, that we are here for a very serious, sacred commitment for humanity, starting with our country, Kenya, where we believe in what one would call a sustainable society, a happy society, an inclusive society where opportunities are for all. Change is never brought by wish. Change is brought by doing what it takes to see change. And this is a change that just needs to be made by making the right decisions. So our objective is to use this program to secure possessions of decision making. And every level of society will require decision making. At your village, there will be need for decision making at national level, at county level, at private sector, at corporate level. That is the power we must uh, achieve. The opportunity to sit in the seats of decision making. So that we can open opportunities equitably, just in a very just way. 
But all this is great to dream, but it will only happen if the change starts with you. Change must start with you. You must change and transform yourself. In changing and transforming yourself, there are three things that you need to have. The first one is clarity of vision. This vision must be very clear to you like daylight. You must be able to see it. You must be able to sense it. It must be absolutely clear. And I just want to help you to clarify the dream that this program have for you and for our country. The second thing, after having the dream, is to internalize the dream. Internalize it. Understand it. And live it. If you live it, if you internalize it, if you understand it, then the, the third one, the prerequisite, is passion and enthusiasm to the dream. Nothing has ever been achieved without passion and enthusiasm. You must be fired and inspired enough by this dream so that you are willing to live this dream. And you must live it passionately and enthusiastically so that you have the energy to carry on and have the belief and faith in the dream. You must truly and forth believe in the dream and the beauty of this dream. That it will create a better society for you and for your offsprings. That your children will grow in a better society. That beauty of this dream must be appreciated. And lastly, we must walk the dream. We must walk the dream and we must be the agents of the dream. Because that's the only way we can keep the dream alive. The dream must live in people's hearts, in people's souls, in people's mind. This dream must live in your mind, it must live in your soul, it must live in your heart. So that it's, it's a moving dream, it's a live dream. Now, what will you require to be able to achieve this? The first one, the prerequisites that you require, the first one is identity. Identity. You must be very proud to be part of this uh, program, the Wings to Fly program. That's our identity. It's something we must be very proud of. Believe in and own. That's our space to own. And we identify ourselves with this program. And be the champions of this program. And be proud of who we are today and who we shall be tomorrow and who we were in the past. We should never be ashamed of where we have come from. By the way, where we have come from is a measure of what we have been able to achieve. Is a measure of what we have conquered. Is a measure of our success which we should be celebrating constantly. The second one, prerequisite, is strength of character. Strength of character. Change requires bold, audacious, courageous people. You have, must be bold, audacious, and very, very courageous. Change is not for the faint-hearted. You will not transform yourself. You will not ch change yourself if you are faint-hearted. Because there will be challenges along the way. We must have the strength to rise to any challenge that we confront us because our dream is bigger than the challenges that uh, we we'll confront.
we must be inspired sufficiently and adequately by the dream, big dream so that we are able to overcome all the challenges and find it worth to do whatever it takes to overcome our challenges. What we require most is resilience. We must be very resilient. We must be agile. We must be men and women of great integrity and honesty to ourselves, such that we are honest to ourselves. But we must also realize that this far, we have had Weber, and it's important and imperative that we have faith. That in the scheme of things, that which we don't understand, we must have faith that there is a God who opened doors for us. The power of faith is also very, very important. We must cherish hard work and devotion to what we believe in. These are little attributes that we must all cherish. In terms of strength of uh, character, personality, I urge you to find in your heart humility so that we can be able to handle our success. Humility will be very important. And lastly, our course is about the transformation of others. It's about others. We must find in our heart a place for compassion. Feelings for others. We must be very compassionate about society. That's the only way we can live for others. That's the only way we can live for others. We are compassionate about others. People say we must be ambitious. I agree. We must be very ambitious, knowing that it's within our lifetime, so that we leave a better legacy for our children and grandchildren. Is it possible? My answer is yes. It humbles me that people like Rita Loy, who have no connections to Africa, would find commitment to support this program. It humbles me that the Board of Equity Bank would be willing to sign 2% of the total revenue of the bank to come to this program. If it touches those who have no personal benefit to see the need of this program, how much more should we, the beneficiaries, do for, to make this program successful? And that is where then one has a personal responsibility. To those much has been given, much will be expected from we must be willing to go the extra mile as individuals and as a team to make this program successful. Because our interests are aligned perfectly to the success of this program. Our success is the success of the program. My strong belief is that each of us will be required for this program to succeed. It humbles me sometimes when I look and I say, when I look at each of you, you, you were selected out of a team of maybe 200 and you were among the 12 who succeeded. How privileged were you and how much destiny favored you? And the only question is, then why wouldn't you be the next president of the country? If destiny favored you to be picked out of 200, to be given that scholarship, what would make you not to be picked by the same destiny? It has happened in the past, so shall it happen in the future. That faith and confidence that there is something about you that is unique, 
that is favored and blessed must reside and live in you. You have to remain committed and eloquent in class so that you continue to be the selected few to be in positions of leadership. There is no lack in this. You deserved to be in this room. You deserve to get what you have got. You deserve what you desire. But you must pay the price of what you desire. Fortunately for us, most of the price is hard work. It's sacrifice, it's commitment, it's passion to what we are called to do. Once again, I want to remind you that it is worth paying that price if that is what will make you be in the next selection to the university, to join uh, the internship program, to join the team that will be going out of the country. All these things are ahead of you and will happen to you, but you'll have to do what it takes for them to happen to you, to your life. I want to encourage you that you will remain consistently the chosen one, but you'll have to do what it takes for the chosen ones, what is demanded of the chosen one. You can only fail yourself. We will not fail you. And that uh, then reminds me, maybe to remind you, along the way, there will be a lot of detraction and temptations. I want you to remain on the narrow path, the narrow path that leads to your success. For the moment, I would suggest that you make the sacrifices that makes you remain on the path towards success. In simple, I'm asking you to, to delay the gratification of all detractors. Delay that gratification. A time will come when you can leap that gratification. If it is to us, to us will always be there. If it is movies, movies will always be there. Well, I'm just suggesting for this time, let it remain focused on what will make our dream, our vision, and our cause successful. Let's delay the gratification of all the other things to the time that we will be certain the cause, the vision, and the dream is not at risk. There is nothing as powerful as the power of delayed gratification. And it's true, the fun of life is there today, but the fun of life will be there when you are 30 or 40. So you can say, I don't want to sacrifice my success because of fun that I can delay and have it when I'm at 40. It's just delaying. We are not suggesting you escape. We are just saying delay for the light time. The power of delayed gratification helps you to confront all challenges in life. What we are suggesting is that there will be sacrifices that will need to be made for maybe the next 10 years. But those sacrifices that you make for the next 10 years, you'll be turning 25 by then. Those sacrifices, those delayed gratifications, you can enjoy them for the next 75 years. For I have no doubt in my mind, with modern science and medicine, you live to be 100 years. So why not delay for 10 years and enjoy for 75 years? It's simple mathematics. Sacrifice 10, enjoy 70. Even the gratification of a very beautiful made hair. You can have your hair for the next 75 years.
If it requires to shave it for the next 10 years, shave it. It will grow after 10 years and you retain it for 75 years. Sometimes we get detracted by things that are petty. We lose sight of what is important. It's good to have good hair. It's not necessary to have good hair. You are not a model today. And you are a student. You don't want to be admired. But your hair will grow after, 20, after 25 years and it will be with you for, into perpetuity. I'm suggesting we pay whatever price it, we require to pay for 10 years and then we are one with our dreams. Once we are one with our dreams and aspirations, we'll have overcome all the detractions that would have derailed us. You need to confront the challenges of teenage. Confront them and say, after all, I will lose nothing. If you switch them off and say, I've paid the due for the next 10 years. After 10 years at the age of 25, you switch them on. It's important because that is the big, unfortunately, is the biggest distraction. The second distraction is sometimes, given our circumstances and situation, we need, we sometimes have a very big need and desire to be appreciated and to be loved. I would really appreciate. People appreciate you for who you are not for your circumstances. And this is how you create a paradigm shift in your life. You create a paradigm shift by success. And then success comes with honor and respect. The biggest gain this program can give you is honor, dignity, and respect. But you can only achieve them if you succeed. I can tell you it is not the marks you get in your secondary education, but it's the honor, the respect, and dignity this program will open for you when you succeed. You belong to a network of dignified people, successful people, who among yourselves can remain a network for the rest of your lives. I'm not suggesting the rest of society you don't need them. But the rest of the society will appreciate you more for the impact you create in society. As we become agents of change and transformation, let's strengthen our humanity that we forever remain human to society. That we never use our, our strength and success to take advantage of society that compassion and humility will always accompany us and will be part of ourselves. This program is about society, is about sustainability of our country, is about sustainability of uh, our societies. I want to really appreciate you more at a personal level for me, giving me a chance and an opportunity to be relevant in society and to be impactful and significant. When I look at you, I see myself in each of you. I'm croning myself in each of you. And by croning myself in each of you, I'm then becoming very significant and very impactful. Your success who scale my significance and impact in society. Please give me a chance to be even more significant than I have ever dreamed through you.
That will inspire me to do more. That will inspire me to look for more so that we can grow and succeed even more. And since you joined the program, and now you understand the purpose and the vision of this uh, program, I want to urge you to be the vision and purpose bearer of this program. And then through you, this program will acquire a life of its own and it will live in your heart and your soul and mind. Thank you very much, and I'm really, really grateful.